10 WWE wrestlers who didn't have a theme song and came out to no music. Number 10, Damien Demento. WWE failing to assign a wrestler with a theme song is usually a creative choice that is usually designed to enhance a wrestler's character. When Damien Demento would come to the ring with no song playing, it annihilated his credibility and his gimmick. For the concept of a wrestler coming to the ring with no theme music to work effectively, the wrestler must be over with the audience, or else they'll be walking out to utter silence, and this was the case with Demento. The crowd had zero connection with this character, and it was confusing as to why a supposedly terrifying character that was from the outer reaches of your mind didn't even have a theme song. Number 9. Vladimir Kozlov In 2008, WWE went all in on trying to make Vladimir Kozlov a huge star. Unfortunately, WWE went down the tried and tested route of making Kozlov a generic foreign heel. Whilst this gimmick had worked before, by 2008, the fans were sick to death of it, and they urgently wanted something new. Vince McMahon would take the lead on how to present Kozlov, and it was no doubt his call to have Kozlov initially come to the ring with no music. This was an interesting concept at first, as this would have been the first time a lot of modern WWE fans had experienced a wrestler coming to the ring with zero music. Ultimately, it just didn't work, as Kozlov was simply not getting a reaction. WWE would eventually assign Kozlov a permanent theme song, which was the right move, as it managed to fill the dead air that was in place whenever Kozlov would make his entrance. Number 8. Bob Backlund One of the more unique things about Bob Backlund's presentation, particularly during the 90s, was that he would rarely use a theme in WWE. The sight of Backlund coming to the ring at 94 Survivor Series with no music to face Bret Hart for the WWE Championship was something to behold. It was rather unusual during this time for main event level talent to not have their own theme, and this definitely did make Backlund stand out. A kayfabe reason as to why Backlund may have opted against a theme song could have been that his wrestling character was above theatrics. It was just a shame that this was never explored or explained on TV, as it would have been tremendous character development for the former WWE Champion. A Backlund did have a genuine theme, and this was mainly used for his more outlandish persona that would surface in the mid-90s. Fans of the Attitude Era may recall Backlund using the rather presidential sounding theme song at the 2000 Rumble. Number 7. R Truth In 2011, WWE took a huge risk with R Truth's character. Truth, who had been an established beloved babyface for years, was now going to turn heel. This was a risk as WWE was short on organically over babyfaces at the time, and it may have been detrimental to Truth's credibility if WWE had to quickly reverse back. Now, thankfully, Truth delivered in the new villainous role, and he managed to produce some of the most acclaimed work of his entire career. He stripped back all the fun elements of his persona and he would turn the weird up to a thousand. Truth would also be pushed into the main event scene and he had the crowd reaction and the skills to justify this main event run. One of the most important elements that WWE needed to change when it came to Truth was his theme song. As a babyface, Truth would come to the ring performing his own rap, yet this wasn't going to work as a heel. It would have been possible for Truth to maybe alter the rap and perhaps insult the crowd on the way to the ring, and this is what they did towards the end of his heel run when he was paired with The Miz. However, during the early stages of the heel run, Truth would come to the ring with zero music. The only audio used would be Truth saying, The Truth shall set you free. At the very beginning, this worked extremely well as the crowd would fill the dead air with thunderous boos and it would heavily enhance the heel persona that Truth was trying to deliver. The brief intro that Truth would deliver at the start of his entrance would change as Truth's character developed to now. The Truth has set me free! It was a great touch and showed the development of the character over a period of months. Number 6. The Brainbusters there is a very distinct reason as to why the Brainbusters didn't have a theme song in WWE. According to the legendary Arn Anderson, who was one half of the iconic tank team, it made the duo different, and it showed that the duo are all business the minute they come through the curtain. According to Anderson, this is something that could have easily solved by the WWE commentary team. Anderson is spot on with this assessment, as it was just something that puzzled fans over years, and it could have actually made the WWE audience truly understand their characters and motivations if someone was offering much needed context. Number 5. Bad News Brown In the 80s, it wasn't exactly rare for wrestlers to come out without a theme song, and one of the key names that didn't have a theme song was Bad News Brown. Brown was a no-nonsense wrestler, and he was a wrestler that didn't have a ton of personality when it came to his character, so it would have been hard to even imagine him coming out to a theme song. This style of presentation worked extremely well in the 80s, as the majority of the roster were over to some degree, so it never felt awkward when wrestlers such as Brown would make their entrance. Number 4. The Genius 
The Genius is one of the more forgotten about WWE characters, which is a shame, as the gimmick was fun and it managed to get over with the crowd. In fact, when the Genius took on Hulk Hogan in the late 80s at Saturday Night's main event, the match had significant heat attached to it, and the Genius's heel work was excellent. The Genius had a unique presentation in WWE as he would rarely get an entrance. Most of the time, he would just already be in the ring, and then he would deliver a poem. If the Genius was given an entrance, then zero theme music would be used. Yet his entrance was usually filled with fans booing to the ceiling. Number 3. Vicky Guerrero Vicky Guerrero became a big part of WWE TV between 2006 to 2014. Guerrero was arguably one of the top heels on the entire show, and her heel work was masterful, and it was certainly a body of work that her late husband, the late great Eddie Guerrero, would definitely be proud of. Due to the overwhelming heat that Ms. Guerrero would attain whenever she would appear, WWE never thought it was appropriate to give her a theme song. This was definitely the right call. Guerrero would often appear shouting, Oh, no. oh my god. god! And this was enough for the fans to know who was on the stage and who was about to make their presence felt on the show. In a wholesome and emotional gesture, Guerrero would be given a theme song for her final match of her full time run. When Guerrero wrestled Stephanie McMahon on Raw, she would use Eddie Guerrero's theme song. This was the right time for Guerrero to debut a theme song, and WWE delivered this presentation perfectly. Number 2 Tommaso Ciampa Upon turning heel in NXT, Tommaso Ciampa was so hated by the core NXT audience that he didn't even need a theme song. Ciampa, despite being one of the top stars on the roster at the time, would walk out with no music, and this was everything he needed to take his character to the next level. It was Ciampa's way of showing that he didn't need a flashy song to get his point or character across. He was going to walk to the ring, do his thing, and he didn't care who he upset or who he offended. When Ciampa made his entrance at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, he was met with thousands of fans booing him, and due to him having no theme song, his entrance was pure heel magic. Ultimately, WWE would decide to give Ciampa his own theme song in NXT. This theme song would be titled, No One Will Survive. And whilst his creative decision was criticized at first, this theme song was outstanding and managed to become one of the most popular theme songs from the respective time. And number 1. Andre the Giant The word aura is thrown around a lot in modern wrestling, but when it comes to the legendary Andre the Giant, he was a name that defined the word. It's well documented just how much of an attraction and a legitimate draw Andre was as a performer, and one of the things that made Andre stand out was the fact he never had a theme song during his WWE run. It was almost as if Andre's presence and his appearance spoke volumes, and any music would have hindered his presentation somewhat. It's also hard to come up with an appropriate theme song for Andre, as he truly was larger than life. Trying to replicate that would have been very difficult. WCW had a similar idea when they debuted The Giant aka The Big Show, however this didn't have the same effect, and when Big Show debuted in WWE in the late 90s, he was quickly assigned an official theme song. But there you have it folks, 10 WWE wrestlers who didn't even have a theme song and came out to know music. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.